yeah hi everyone so let's get started cool so yeah so let's start in just a second hmm. so we are starting with differentiability okay so uh, we have seen that uh, uh, that how to define a tangent which means that uh, if you if you want to know the tangent of uh, at any point then how you can write the slope of the tangent so we have seen the slope of the tangent will be uh, something like this will be something like this right this is the slope of the tangent and now uh, let's just uh, let's just first define the differentiability itself like what do i mean to say differentiability and then we will go uh, go to some other things so let's just start with the differentiability definition okay so suppose that we have any function and then uh, just a second let me just hide sort of, yeah so suppose we have any function and then we want to uh, define that what what do i mean to call that function is differentiable or not so we will say that if the function is smooth then the function is differentiable okay so in layman terms you can say that that if the function if the function which is smooth then function is differentiable now can anyone tell me that what do i mean to say function is smooth i mean although i have not defined this smoothness mathematically but still like anyone wants to say something about this smoothness gap means what no breaks no uh, uh, no a smooth means a smooth means that slope of that function okay a smooth at some point okay i'm talking about a smooth at any point okay a smooth at some point uh, let's suppose a then i mean the slope doesn't change drastically okay so i mean to say here a smoothness means i mean to say that slope slope doesn't change drastically okay which means let's suppose if i say if i say you that uh, like i'm currently i'm not doing any any uh, mathematical uh, proofs or something but i'm just giving you one intuitive idea let's suppose if i say that there is a function okay there is a function that is that is this okay uh, maybe this function and then let's suppose this is linear after after this point okay so suppose suppose this is linear after this point i mean it becomes linear slowly and then then i say that here the function is something like this and then maybe maybe later it takes some other value something like this so now tell me at this point at this point if i just ask you whether this function is smooth or not then what you will say at this particular point is this a smooth a smooth means what slope slope should not change drastically so what is the slope here whatever it is right slope basically is uh, is in major in terms of tan theta or something so whatever slope it is it is basically it, it is something like this i mean the angle is something like this and and at this point just just before this point and just after this point you you look at the slopes just before this point slope was something something which means may, maybe the tan theta is is basically there so i think it is negative but i i don't uh, want to comment on this negative or positive or something like that but anyway like slope is something and then uh, then this is again the tan theta and the slope slope is something else so uh, so basically if you if you look at uh, this point then just before this point and just after this point so basically if i say this point is a so i can say just before this point and just after this point slopes are not same right so just before the point and just after the point so if i talk about slope here if i talk about slope here these two slopes are not same so i will say that function is not smooth this is just in the layman terms obviously we will we will define it mathematically but i will say if these two are not equal then i will say the function is not smooth 
is this clear to everyone then it means function is not smooth which means function is not differentiable at this point so if the slopes are changing so drastic okay see just within within the uh, interval of plus h and minus h plus h and minus h means that uh, like just before that and just after that so if slopes are changing so drastically then i will say the function is not differentiable okay you talk about any other point maybe at this point just before that maybe if you if you say the slope is something like this i mean the angle just look at the angle okay it is something like this after just after that is also something like this right so uh so basically uh, like i if i draw it it might be something like this and just after this might be a doesn't matter might be something like this also right so basically if you just check it check at any other point here in this particular example then it is not changing so drastic so is this a smooth hair is this a smooth hair yeah, just before maybe something like this just after maybe something like this right so yes it is it is smooth here also now tell me if i if i draw any tangent okay if i draw any tangent at um uh, for the any function let's suppose okay so suppose whatever it is so basically if i draw any tangent here let's suppose at this point then like just i'm asking for your sake of knowledge then just tell me can it uh if, I, if i'm drawing any tangent here then can it cut the function also which means i mean okay just a second um see <laughs> okay I'm not able to draw a good function, but anyway, let me just try. If I draw a tangent at this function, then can this, uh, can this uh, tangent uh, cut the function itself later at some point in time? So answer is yes right so basically let's suppose there is some equation of this tangent whatever it is there is some equation of this function fx there is some equation of this tangent let's suppose lx and if i if i say that how many roots are there for lx equal to fx then what is your answer how many times it is cutting so uh, for i mean how many how many points are satisfying lx equal to fx two points right one is this one another one is this one another one is this one right so two points are satisfying here and uh like uh, actually cutting a equal sum yeah cutting an equal sum like uh, two functions are are meeting at some point see lx equal to fx means at which point both are equal at at which point of x at, at which value of x both are equal at this value at this value right so at these two value both are equal if you solve this lx equal to fx then you will be getting these two points definitely 100 percent you will be getting these two points okay so anyway like if this is just uh, one confusion that some people might be having that's why i'm just telling you Okay, let's not worry about uh, this LX, FX, these things. So what I'm only only saying that this uh, tangent can also cut the function. Okay, so it's not necessary that tangent cannot cut the function if you people have any any of this kind of confusion. Okay, let's come back to the definition of differentiability. So when we say the function is differentiable, whenever the slopes are not changing it's, uh, drastically. So the function is smooth, which means the slopes are not changing drastically in the neighborhood. slope does not change drastically in the neighborhood okay so see it is very important to write in the neighborhood which means that uh, you can't just say uh, say to me that okay see here here uh, here the function the slope is something like this i mean at this point uh, the slope is something like this and it is not changing drastically you can just look at this point no you have to you have to look at the neighborhood only okay just in the neighborhood the things are defined just for the neighborhood so that's very important that's why we only have the local minima there is no like as far as i know um, uh, i hope i'm correct there is no algorithm that can actually find the global maxima or global minima directly 
okay see you can only find the local minimum or local maxima always there are uh, like uh, like uh, okay with my limited limited knowledge only i'm saying that uh, according to me there is no algorithm like i don't know if there is a, there is at all but according to me there is no algorithm that can find the global maxima or global minima uh, okay so i mean you you cannot find the global maxima or global minima because differentiality talks about in terms of neighborhood only right they only say that okay this point is basically uh, basically uh, like we will talk about it later but this point a uh, value at this point is lesser than uh, the in the neighborhood like if you if you go little left lit, little right then the value is minimum right so that's why it is a local minimum but at later point in time maybe maybe some other minimum may come right maybe some other minimum may come so we always talk about the local minima or local maxima we never talk about the global global things because we 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 can't talk about the global things uh, because there is uh, no such uh, i mean no such definition we have defined for the differentiability for in terms of global ha huh. so you have to talk about uh, you you have to talk about uh, in the neighborhood okay so now let's define the differentiability in mathematics so what is the differentiability mathematically okay so uh, as we have seen as we have seen that uh, the equation of the slope if you talk about equation of the slope uh, just in left of a then what what could be the equation of the slope i mean just with respect to the left, left of a or, or in other terms i can say that equation of the slope that is uh, that is joining a point which is a comma fa and a minus h comma uh just a second okay a comma f a minus h comma f of a minus h so if i just talk about the equation uh, of a uh, like if i just talk about the slope of a equation which is joining these two points then can you write that slope slope of the equation is equal to so it will be i think by 2 minus y1 uh, which means i think f of a minus h minus f a i mean whatever like i mean uh, either you write f a minus f of a minus h does not matter maybe uh, whatever the convention you you want to follow you can follow okay so this is a minus h upon minus a so it will be f of a minus h minus f a upon minus h right this is the slope of the equation which is joining these two points now uh, that h in general could be anything but am i interested in in general h or i am interested in some specific h am i interested in uh, in taking h any value or i am interested in taking h just tend to zero right so i am actually more interested in taking the value h tends to zero right so basically i will say that on the left left neighbor the slope is right so i mean with respect to the left neighbor this is a slope now can you talk about the uh, slope uh, with respect to right neighbor also i think we can talk about right so maybe maybe i can quickly talk about this shouldn't we take fa minus fa minus yeah you can do anything if you do fa minus fa minus h it will be a minus a minus h i mean you can just multiply minus 1 uh, on the denominator and numerator does not matter okay it will be it will be then plus h okay it does not matter like you can do you can do in any way you can multiply by the minus 1 uh, here also and here also okay now let's just talk about the slope uh, slope of the points which are uh, which are on the right of this a right okay sorry i'm am i taking too much of time just for the copy paste things i hope deepak could have uh, written uh, twice of this what i'm doing and taking in just uh, copying and pasting this is a, a f a 
and then this is a plus h f a plus h right good and by the way like uh, you can just give me a feedback am i using uh, two uh, two less colors or is this okay like uh, the color coding that i'm using is this okay this is fine right okay okay so uh, slope slope of a point slope on a point which is right to a So what will the slope? It will be a plus h minus a. So it will be something like this, right? It will be this much. Slope will be this much. Now, what I'm what I'm trying to say, the way I'm trying to define this differentiability is like this: the slope on the left. I mean, if you if you come from the left, there whatever is the slope. If you go to the right, whatever is the slope, this slope should not change, right? So which means I will say a function is differentiable. if slopes are same in see you always talk about neighborhood okay in neighborhood which means slope with respect to the left will be f of a minus h which should be same as राइट जस्ट लेफ्ट एंड जस्ट राइट की स्लोप बिल्कुल सेम तो नहीं होगी सो दैट्स व्हाट आई एम सेइंग दिस इज दिस इज वेयर दिस लिमिट कम्स लिमिट एच टेंस टू 0 सो इफ यू जूम इट मे बी मिलियन टाइम्स देन यू विल से यू विल यू 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 हैव टू एग्री ऑन दिस दैट स्लोप्स आर सेम ओके इट इज नॉट चेंजिंग लाइक आई मीन यू हैव टू जूम इट लिटरली लाइक बिलियंस ऑफ यू हैव टू पुट द मैग्नीफायर व्हिच इज जूमिंग इट बिलियन टाइम्स एंड देन यू विल एक्चुअली सी दैट ओके द स्लोप्स आर नॉट चेंजिंग आई मीन द द पॉइंट्स आर एक्चुअली सेम ऑलमोस्ट सेम नो इट इज नॉट इवन द अप्रोक्स इट इज बेसिकली सिंस द लिमिट एच टेंस टू 0 इट मींस दैट यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द एग्जैक्ट थिंग सो दिस इज कॉल्ड या दिस इज कॉल्ड लेफ्ट हैंड डेरिवेटिव ओके दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग इज कॉल्ड लेफ्ट हैंड डेरिवेटिव एंड दिस राइट दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग इज कॉल्ड राइट हैंड डेरिवेटिव now is this definition clear to everyone do you uh, would you believe that if i if i tell you some story regarding this particular definition so uh, that uh, so what happened like uh, i was uh, i was in the iisc classroom and yeah this is not obviously the fake one and uh, there is a professor his he is very pop popular professor his name is shreesh shavde shreesh shavde if you go to isc then uh, most probably he will be taking your interview like for any uh, any machine learning role i mean uh, for any uh, uh, machine learning related uh, course which is mtech research or 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 phd or or whichever it is so i was in sri sri shavde sir's class and then uh, what happened like uh, he was doing something related to function differentiability and then he asked the basic very core definition of function differ differentiability that how does it uh, how does it got defined and like that and then uh, see remember it is isc class which is itself a huge thing like it's it's not uh, any any hululu college obviously it's uh, it's isc and in that uh, in that class like very few students i can say like five six students uh, uh, just raises raise their hand to immediately like uh, he just asked that who who has these things on top of their mind okay which means that uh, i mean obviously it's iic so um, you pick a random student and most probably the student uh, like as is like most probably the student is brilliant like, okay you pick a random student i have i have done that experiment so like many times like i used to wonder that okay like i don't know like initially when i went to the first semester then initially i used to wonder that okay uh, maybe uh, can i discuss with this guy like uh, this assignment uh, like will i be able to discuss this assignment with this guy or i mean would he he be able to help like he doesn't seem to be intelligent he is very quiet he is very peaceful maybe he is struggling and then i i go to him and then to my surprise uh, he knows almost everything so basically i mean like you pick a random student most probably he is brilliant like that's he or she is brilliant that's that's what i see so uh, the professor asked that who who has a basic definition in their mind like uh, how does differentiability is defined so only in the class of 50 60 only five or six student uh, raise their hand 
and uh, this was the moment that professor decided to ask this particular question in the interview also and then later i got to know that uh, whenever he have to ask something from the calculus he always asked this kind of questions like how how you define this differentiability definition so that's why it is better to know if you go to isc uh, for mtech research uh, admission then um, then most probably if, if he has to ask something from the calculus then then there's a good chance that he will be asking these things i mean he has been asking from 2 3 years that's what i got to know okay yeah nice aditya so aditya is saying i gave this definition today in the group yeah that's great okay so uh, have you understood this that uh, this is how the uh, this is how the differentiability is defined that the function have to be smooth which means if you if you are coming from the left or you are coming from the if uh, right then the slope is same so now tell me tell me what is this is this is this the equation of the uh, equation of the uh, tangent or is this a just a slope of the tangent see let's suppose so uh, like we also uh, this is also called the uh, f dash x f dash x at point a okay at point a basically f dash a you can say f dash a which is equal to this so basically this is just a slope which means like if you have let's suppose x power 4 minus x cube or something okay this is a function if you differentiate it then it will be 4x cube minus 2x square or something and you put the value uh, okay so okay so you if you just look at this then first tell me that is this a equation of uh, a line is this a equation of the line is the differentiation obviously no right this could be a curve and first of all these things this is not even the variable this is this is not even the variable this is not even the equation or not even the variable this is this is actually you are putting the value of a like i mean which means you have to put the value a and then you will be getting just one scalar number how this scalar number could be the equation so some people have this misconception that this is a equation how this scalar number this will be some scalar number if you put a, a equal to 1 it will be 4 minus 2 or something like this right it will be a scalar number how this scalar number could be a equation so basically what i am trying to say here is that this is not the equation this is just a slope of the equation okay slope of tangent tangent at a okay and that's also called f dash a so that's the definition of differentiability so let me go to our slide so basically we have defined the differentiability is basically left hand derivative and right hand derivative both, both should be same a function should not be changing the slope drastically like this okay and if a function is changing the slope slowly then it's okay then then we say that function is differentiable if it is changing so drastic that in the neighborhood itself the things are changing then it's it's not the differentiable at this particular point okay now let's just do uh, i mean let's just see this question that we have already seen uh, in the in the uploaded video so what this question says is check the differentiability at at the point uh, one and two. i mean check whether this function is differentiable or not so do you have to check on the on the, all the points or on just uh, just few points and what are the points which are which you are suspecting one two why you are suspecting one two because see before one it is continuous right it is it is very much differentiable it is very much differentiable a uh, between one and two it is it is just a polynomial polynomials are differentiable right this is two minus s which is differentiable greater than two also differentiable at only two you have you have to check or at only one you have to check whether this is differentiable or not so what you can do you can go to the left hand limit okay at one which means at one if you want to check you can check for the left hand derivative and you can check uh, for at the right hand derivative if both are same then you will say the function is differentiable otherwise you will say function is not differentiable so this is what we have done but there is a short trick also so what is the short trick short trick is that you can okay basically there is some uh, something wrong here i will i will uh, i will tell you that what is wrong here so what you can do you can directly differentiate and then you can check whether the function is differentiable or not okay so maybe let's just uh, let's just do one question uh, the same question and then i will i will come back to uh, this particular slide again just the same question i want to do yeah so let's just check for each of the following function rested whether it falls to continuous and where it is uh, falls to differentiable so let's just check whether this function is differentiable or not so let's just check using the short trick and what is the short trick you can directly differentiate and then you can check whether the function is differentiable at zero or not so if you differentiate if you differentiate then since you have to check at zero then that's why you basically uh, see the function was this
So if you just check it, this is the function. And if you differentiate this function, you will be getting minus two X zero and then minus one. But since you are suspected at zero, so which means like you don't know whether it is differentiable at zero or not. So that's why what you need to do, you need to basically put question mark here, whether it is defined, whether the function is defined, the differentiability of the function is defined at zero or not. So uh, you cannot put equal here. Okay. You cannot put equal at any point. So basically it is better to put the question marks here. And then you can check the differentiability. Now you check whether less than zero. If you check it, then what is the less than zero? Less than zero is minus two, oh, sorry, zero. And greater than zero is zero. So yeah, that is differentiable at zero. So at equal to zero also it is zero, right? Less than one, it is zero. Greater than one, it is just one. That's why the function, the, that's why the function is not differentiable at one, right? Have you understood what I'm saying here? that you are putting the question marks. Why you are putting the question marks? Because till now you, you just have to check the uh, differentiability at these two points. So that's why you are putting the question marks here in the piecewise function. Yeah. You only have to check at the zero and one because otherwise less than zero, the function is differentiable. Greater than one, the function is polynomial. Hence it is differentiable. So we don't know what is the derivative at x equal to zero and x equal to RR. There might even not exist. We see that uh, limit x tends to zero fx exist because both left and right limits are same. Okay. Which means that once you, once you basically do this, once you find the derivative, then you can check the limits less than zero. What is that? Uh, what is the value Le greater than zero? What is the value less than one? What is the value greater than one? What is the value? Okay. I hope that is clear. Actually in the gate, uh, I I'm not sure if they have asked that, uh, that kind of difficult questions. I mean, even they have not asked any, any piecewise function and all they will ask you very simple question and we will be doing the P by Q. Okay. Don't worry. Cool. So is the differentiability clear that how to check whether the function is differentiable or not? So suppose you, you need to check at three, then what you will do, you will differentiate and then you will check whether left and uh, left and right uh, limits of the, of the three, which means three minus F of F dash three minus, which is, which means left, left limit and light, right limit are same or not. Okay. And then you will say that, yes, it is, uh, it is, I mean, it is differentiable at uh, this particular point, which is three. Okay. We have solved these two questions. Cool. Now let's go to this slides. Now let's solve this question. What they're saying for C, uh, which is a real number, prove that derivative of F X equal to C X is a constant function, right? Okay. Can you prove it? I mean, using the basic definition of the differentiability. So what you need to do, you need to check whether this limit S tends to zero F of a plus H minus F a upon H is the same as limit H tends to zero F of a minus H minus F a divided by H, right? So if you do it, then what you're getting here divided by minus H, if you do it, then what you're getting here and that is same as F does A. Okay. So for any, if you do it, then F of A plus H is basically C or C into A plus H minus C into A divided by H. It will be C, I think, right? C A and C A will get canceled out. It will be C. Similarly here also it will be C. So here also it will be C. So since both the side you are getting C, that's why you can say that, uh, that F does A is C for any A, right? For any A. I mean, this is constant and that's how you can prove that this is F dash X is C. Okay. So that's very easy proof. You can prove it. I mean, this is a question from Berkeley university, but now this is a very basic question just to, just to make you understand that even if you use a basic definition of the differentiability, then also you can differentiate, but we have direct formulas for the differentiation. We might not be using it, but it's very good to see that. Okay. The basic definitions also work. Right. You can differentiate just using the basic definition. Cool. Now let's just see the maxima and minima. Okay. Which means that uh, when the function is attaining the maxima, when the function is attaining the minima, these kind of things. So suppose if I say, uh, okay. 
so suppose if i say there is a function okay i mean the differentiation the differentiation you know that is a slope right which means y2 minus y1 first of all you know this right upon x2 minus x1 this is a slope now suppose i say that this x2 minus x1 is always positive i mean uh, it can be negative but uh, just listen me suppose i say that it is always positive which means i am increasing x okay which means i'm i'm talking about the two points where x1 is this and x2 is this which means i'm increasing the x i'm i'm increasing the x if i'm increasing the x if y also increases if y also increases which means if if whenever x2 x2 is greater than x1 if x2 is greater than x1 at the same time which means if i'm increasing the x if y is also increasing then what will i say that function is increasing right the function is increasing i mean if i'm increasing x and by increasing x i got to know that okay y also got increased then the function is increasing right and what what can you say in terms of slope if the function is increasing it means the slope is positive right so here the slope is positive because this is greater than 0 and at the same time this is also greater than 0 then slope will be positive which means if i say that suppose i take two points a and a plus h f of a plus h minus f of a upon h right if let's suppose if i go to from a plus h to a sorry a to a plus h if i go from a plus a to a plus h and then i say that okay this value this value this particular value fa plus h minus fa this is also greater than 0 right then it means the slope is greater than 0 or vice versa if slope is greater than 0 then this is greater than 0 see if i am saying that this is the slope okay if i am saying that f a plus h is greater than f a okay doesn't it imply that slope is greater than 0 which is this this is slope right or vice versa which means the slope is greater than 0 can't i say that this is also greater than 0 i mean the, i mean uh, by putting this greater than 0 can't i say that this fa fa plus h and fa uh, fa is greater than fa plus h is greater than fa okay twinkle is having one doubt which is but slope greater than 0 can also mean fa minus yeah so you can do in that way also so here you will be doing minus h in that case ultimately it will be greater than 0 see first of all these two are same whatever you are talking about these two are first of all the quantities are same because then only the function is differentiable otherwise the function is not even the differentiable right so whatever you are talking about whichever quantity you are talking about the that that quantity and this quantity is first of all same so without uh, uh, i mean without getting confused or without loss of generality i'm just taking uh, one of the derivative okay uh, right hand derivative you can work with the left hand derivative it won't matter because both are same and then only we are talking about the function yes because the function is differentiable then only we are talking about these, these all of all of these things okay otherwise i won't talk about all of these things so i'm talking about f dash x here the my assumption is the function is already differentiable okay cool so i can say that see this is this is slope is nothing but f dash x right slope is nothing but f dash x so i can say that that if f dash x is greater than 0 then it means that by increasing x by increasing by going from a to a plus h you are increasing the function which means if f dash x is greater than 0 at a okay at a then uh, at a means like uh, you will be putting the value a then it means that if f dash x is greater than 0 which which f dash x is nothing but a slope right which means that function is increasing okay so if f dash x is greater than 0 and straight away means that function must be increasing
right so basically see f dash x is nothing but a slope so if you are if you if you are having a positive slope it definitely mean that function is increasing why because the slope is nothing but slope is nothing but f of a minus h minus f of a upon minus s this is slope right if you talk about uh, you can take minus h or plus h does not matter uh, let's talk about this so this is slope if i say this is greater than 0 can i say the function is increasing just talk just just think about it if this is greater than 0 then what does this mean it automatically means that this c this is negative so you can multiply minus here so it automatically means that f a is greater than greater than f of a minus h right which means if you're coming from a minus h if you talk about a minus h to a then you will say that if you're going from a minus h to a then function value is increasing right so the function is increasing at this point so if f dash x is greater than zero, like you just remember it, you don't have to prove it again and again. Actually, the formal proof, the mathematical proof is given by the Taylor series. So there is a Taylor series and using which you can give the mathematical proof, right? But I think uh, about the Taylor series, something I talked about here, maybe not sure. I think in one of the lecture, I just stated the Taylor formula. Okay. So using the Taylor series, actually you can prove uh, th theoretically that uh, if f dash x is greater than zero, then function is greater than zero. So maybe, uh, okay, I don't exactly remember the Taylor series, but I think it's something like this. Kuch aisa hai, theke? Something like this, if I remember correctly. So, uh, so basically, uh, this HC Taylor Taylor. This is a Taylor series. Obviously, you don't need to know. Uh, Taylor series is only applicable first of all in the neighborhood again, which means that uh, it it says that if you know the function value at a, if you know the function value of a, and you want to approximate the function value in the neighborhood, which means you want to know the function value uh, near to a, which means at a plus h, then you can approximate using something like uh, some formula. So let's suppose h is very small. So h square is even extremely small. So that's why generally we uh, make these terms at zero. Okay. Uh, for this. And then, then if function is increasing, then, uh, okay, this is <laughs> again, the definition of f dash a. I don't think I, I did a great job here. So this is again, a definition of F dash A, right? Okay. That will boil down to the, I think, same argument that uh, if, if this is greater than zero, then, uh, then this F dash X is already, already greater than zero. Okay. So anyway, like uh, these are the Taylor formula and uh, you can actually prove these kind of things using the Taylor series that you do not need to obviously know. So let me write note in syllabus. But uh, have you understood this intuition that what I'm talking about, the slope is basically defined like this. Okay. Or maybe it's better to, to do something like this. Slope is basically defined like this. And if I say that slope is positive, then it automatically means that function is increasing, which means this must be positive. Okay. This must be positive because edge is some positive quantity, which is approaching to zero. This is already positive. H is greater than zero. It is already there. H is some positive quantity, which is approaching to zero. Okay. I mean, zero point uh, something like zero point zero 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 something like this. Okay. So H is already positive. And then if this is greater than zero, then this must be greater than zero, which means that you can say that, uh, if slope is positive, if slope is positive, which means if this quantity is positive, then then the function is increasing because this quantity must be greater than zero. It means that F a plus H it must be, this means that F a plus H must be greater than F a. Okay. Anyway, I will just ask you to remember this, that if F dash X is greater than zero, then function must be increasing or vice versa. If function is increasing at this particular point, okay. At that point, function is increasing means what? Can I say this function is increasing? Can I say this function is increasing? Tell me. So I have to ask, I mean, you have to ask at which point you are talking about, right? You have to ask which point or at least in which interval you are talking about. 
right so i can say the function is increasing till this point but then it started decreasing then it is it it started increasing from this point to this point so you have to actually ask at which point okay so you need to ask at which which point so i will say the function is increasing at some point a at some point a then then it means it means that at that point the f dash is a, a is greater than 0 okay so you can write in some way that if Okay, so here let me just write remember it. Actually, you have to remember it. I mean, we have seen the intuitive idea, but just remember it. Okay. Function is increasing at point A. Okay. So I hope that is clear to everyone. Now let's just see this question. Now what they are saying, if F dash X is greater than zero for all X in this interval, then F is increasing on this interval. Is this true? Right? So this is true. Okay. Easy question. I hope you understood. So what they're saying that if, uh, if F dash X is greater than zero, then it has to be the function must be increasing. There is no, no other, uh, I mean, no other possibility. Now let's just see this. Now what they're saying that for this graph F dash X, the derivative of this function is shown below. So basically they have given the derivative. They have not given the function. They have even given, uh, they have actually given the, um, uh, the graph of the derivative. Okay. This is the graph of the derivative. And then they have asked something. Let's just see what they have asked. They have asked that on which of the following point the function is increasing. So this is the first question. Maybe I can just. They have asked these two questions. Are you able to see these two questions? Can you tell me the answers? So on which of the following interval the fx is increasing? They have actually given the derivative, okay? A uh, graph of the derivative. See, see what, what they're saying that on which of the following point function is increasing. So whenever the f dash x is greater than zero, right? So which means where it is greater than zero, zero to two, yes, greater than zero, two to four, yes, greater than zero, four to six, yes, greater than zero, six to eight is not greater than zero, eight to 10 is also not greater than zero. Yeah, 10 to 12, it is greater than zero. So that's why this is the answer. Is this okay to everyone that how we are solving it? Okay. Now tell me if they say that suppose F zero, okay. You don't know the, uh, the F F zero. Basically you, you, you know, like approximately like the values of F dash X, but you don't know F zero. So they are saying that F zero is minus four. Then which of the following statement could be true? Then F six, they are asking you, tell me four to six is not decreasing four to six F dash X is decreasing. I will, I will come to this point later that what do we mean to say that F dash X is increasing or decreasing for see, just, just, just listen to me carefully for this particular point in time. Don't worry about the, the behavior of F dash X, which means whether it is increasing or decreasing. Tell me the, what is the value of F dash X in this interval constant F dash X is increasing here. F dash X is decreasing here, but don't worry about it. What do we worry about? What do we worry about? that F dash X is positive or not. The only thing we worry about that F dash X is positive or not. Okay. That's the only thing I hope you understood. So we only talk about the F dash X is positive or not. Cool. Currently, currently I'm saying this later, later we will come to this point that what do we mean to say that the slope itself is increasing. I mean, F dash X is increasing or decreasing. So let's just solve this question. Suppose F zero is minus four, then which of the following could be true? F six, we're asking. F zero is given to be minus four. I mean, at this point, the function value, not the F dash X, but since it is increasing from zero to six, then it must be, it is, it must be greater than minus four, right? Is this okay to everyone? So that's why, that's why the correct answers are okay. So let me just show you the answers. The correct answers are this. 
as we have marked right this 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 and this okay i hope you understood this now let's just move to the next question so uh, i will just zoom it out but uh, let's just read this question first what they are saying a portion of the graph of the differentiable function kx so they have given the kx and then they are asking what is the possibility of the graph for k dash x okay which means sorry just a second so which means they have given you this kx okay let me just zoom this out and then they are asking the possibility of k dash x can you tell me this question is taken from university of michigan have you heard about university of michigan university of michigan is obviously one of the top university and uh, actually one of my uh, one of my cousin uh, has been uh, there at university of michigan so he has done some uh, management course and currently he is in silicon valley uh, company name is uh, sorry i forgot his company name but yeah, currently he is in silicon valley in usa so he has done uh, mba from university of michigan no he is in not meta he he has done his his uh, his internship from microsoft and uh, there he he has spent 6 uh, months so at microsoft so he was telling me one thing about the microsoft that i was not uh, not knowing can you can you guess that uh, how big that microsoft campus might be at uh, at the silicon valley so he told me that if you are at uh, at some company like microsoft google or these kind of company in their in their head office okay in the silicon valley or something then probably you never go have to out from their uh, their campus so microsoft campus or the google or the facebook or some some good company some uh, some great companies campus are so big that you never have to go out from the campus which means schools hospital shopping malls everything is there in the campus this is so huge that in your even in your lifetime you never have to go out of those campuses so that was a really great motivation for me also to work in silicon, silicon valley but then yeah so maybe we can <laughs> maybe some of you can uh, uh, go to silicon valley and then we can visit it uh, using your visiting pass okay so what is the answer here answer is b cool so why b is the answer let's just see so this is f dash x see it is increasing the function is a uh, constant uh, then which means uh, okay i will talk about it but uh, but the function is constant constant means the f dash x is actually zero okay so it is actually zero so f dash x should be zero d na d hona chahiye na why b f dash x should be zero right okay so b is definitely not the answer and c is also definitely not the answer so maybe a or d but let's just see right maybe a or d b and c are not the answer because this function is constant here and then uh, then it should be uh, the f dash x should be zero so which means ये समझ आ गया ना तो आई थिंक बी और सी आंसर नहीं होना चाहिए लेट्स जस्ट सी वेदर ए इज आंसर और डी इज आंसर नो फंक्शन इज इंक्रीजिंग आफ्टर सर्टेन पॉइंट मे बी ओके व्हाटएवर इट इज फंक्शन इज इंक्रीजिंग एंड देन टिल दिस इन बिटवीन 3 टू 4 इट इज इंक्रीजिंग व्हिच मींस द एफ डैश एक्स शुड बी पॉजिटिव सो या एफ डैश एक्स इज पॉजिटिव टिल दिस पॉइंट ओके सो हियर सम गडवर्ड इज देयर राइट i mean this is just a intuitive question but uh, here something something is uh, gadbad so i think d is the correct answer so because between 3 to 4 uh, there is some point till that point the function f dash x should be greater than 0 yeah 3.5 you can say 3.5 till 3.5 the f dash x should be greater than 0 so that's why d is the correct answer right and then after that it is decreasing then the f dash x should be less than 0 okay so that's why the, the d is the correct answer i think uh, none of you have given the correct answer this is very much surprising Which one? Which is straight line? What you are saying? One to two till straight line. Okay. So I hope uh, this is clear to everyone. The correct answer is D.
Okay, you can check this question later. If there's any confusion, you can let me know. Actually, this is just intuitive question, just to make sure that you understand you are understanding things. Okay. Now let's just see this question. What they're saying below is the graph for f dash x. Again, they have given the graph for f dash x, and then they are they are asking few things. For each of the following, circle all the listed intervals in which the statement is true. So these are the two statements. Let me just go to the next page. Let me just copy this. Okay, are you able to see this? Or should I just zoom it out? So they are asking f dash x is increasing. So this is the uh, yeah, this is a function of f dash x. Then they are asking f dash x is increasing in uh, in which interval? And uh, f x is increasing in which interval? That's what they are asking. f dash x is increasing. You can see in just an interval from zero to some point between a to one, no, one to two, right? Zero to one, it is increasing definitely. One to two is not increasing. Two to three also it is increasing, right? So I think these two are correct. And f x is increasing. Yeah, that's what interesting. Now can you tell me? So for B, Saurabh is saying zero comma three. Okay, between zero to three, it is increasing. Mm -hmm. No, f x is increasing from somewhere from this point to right so maybe you can say that after zero there is a point after that it is started okay just a second yeah so what is the answer here one and three so it is f fx is increasing from uh not uh not from this point minus two to minus one no minus one to zero no zero to one yeah zero to one it is increasing right no from zero to one also it is not increasing one to two it is increasing definitely two to three also it is increasing so these two are correct answer right yeah so these two are correct answer is this okay to everyone okay so as you can see, these are the correct answers. Yeah, it is asking about the FX, right? It is asking about the FX in this particular question. So it means that from one to two, one to two it is increasing because FX is positive. F dash X is positive. That's why FX is increasing, right? And between two to three also, it is increasing because F dash X is positive. No, from zero to one, it is not positive, right? At zero, it is some negative value. At zero, it is some negative value. Okay. Let's now uh, see a different question. Just tell me this answer. These, these are the two questions for true and false. If F has a local maximum and minimum, then can you say F dash C is zero? Okay, so this is true and this is false. That's what you are saying. Okay. So if that has been asking true or false, then actually both are false. The reason, I mean, you you are right. It has to be true. But the reason, the only only reason is that the C, uh, whatever we are talking about, the C could be the last point of the interval. And then f dash x f dash c may not be even defined. Okay. Which means if c is in between the interval, then it's fine. If c is in the between the interval, then it's fine. Otherwise, both are false. Okay. If it is between the interval, you are right. So if c is in between the interval, then true. 
Okay. Which means if C is the last point where I'm talking about this average C, which means if let's suppose if I say that, is this a maximum uh, at this point, at this point, tell me, is this a maximum? Is this a maximum of this function? If the function is defined from here to here at this point, it is maximum, but is, can I say address C is zero? No, right. So if a function has a maximum, then it does it, does this mean that F C is zero? Because since the address C is not even defined at this last point, that's why you, you will say that like address C is not zero because it's not even the defined. So basically if the function is like, if the C is at the last point, then it's a problem. Otherwise in general, it is true in general, it is true. Okay. Just you have to take, take care of, uh, about is not defined, uh, whether it is defined or not. That's the only thing. If the function is continuous and uh, yeah. Also it, it need not to be at the last point. Also, basically it could be something like this. It could be something like this. Uh, let's suppose at this point, the function value is not there, but this is the, this is the C point. Okay. At this C it, it is automatically like it somehow it is like the way I'm defining is basically something like this. It is B less than C it is X square greater than C also X square at C suddenly I'm, I'm giving you some random value. Okay. 500, something like that at C tell me is F C zero at C not even differentiable, right? It's not even defined. So it is not zero. Also it is, it is lo local maxima, although it is local maximum, but it is not zero. So the only change is that, that F C should be defined. If F C is defined, then uh, if I just add, if F is a local ma minimum maximum at C and F C exists, then, then F C must be zero. So this is true. Okay. So if I, if I just modify this statement, something like this. This is true, right? Yeah, actually they might not be asking this thing. I mean, if they can ask, I'm, I'm not saying it, but if they ask you such things, then you have to be careful. Yeah. Converse is this, that, uh, yeah, if you have that is zero, then it, it is not necessary whether, whether it is local minima or maximum. We will see this later. Okay. There are some other points apart from the minimum and maximum. So let's just see the first derivative test. Do you remember the first derivative test? So what we say that that f dash x is greater than zero then function is increasing that's what we know f dash x is less than zero function is decreasing that's what we know right now what we can say that we will be putting f dash x equal to zero then then it could be local minima, maxima, or it could be some other point, which is called critical point or, I mean, all, all are critical point, but uh, that's called the point of inflation. Okay. Inflection. So basically if F dash X is zero, then what will I do? Let's suppose I'm, I'm getting a and B. Then what will I do using this first derivative? I will be checking. Let's suppose that F dash X is zero. Then I will be writing this on the number line. This is a. This is B. The first derivative test says that before this, okay. So I'm I'm checking the signs of F dash X. Before this, let's suppose it is positive, it is negative, something like this. Okay. Let's suppose this is the case. Then what does this mean? It means the function was increasing, increasing here, and then at A it 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 got uh, after it, it it started decreasing. Then what does this mean? That A is point of maxima. I mean, I, I should be saying local maxima. Okay. So by default, always, it means the local because we can't even talk about the global things. Okay. Similarly, similarly, if you know this, right, if this is going from, if this is going from negative to positive, then what does this mean? If F dash X is less than zero, it was decreasing. Okay. And then after it started, uh, I mean, it is positive, then it started increasing. Then what does this mean? It is local minimum. Yeah. And if I say that the function is behaving something like this, which means 
which means before that it is positive after that also it is positive but at a it is actually f dash is uh, f dash is zero which means it was increasing it was increasing at a suddenly something happened okay i will i will tell you that uh, something uh, some, what may so happen suddenly something happened and function became flat at a and then again it started increasing okay see no function is not discontinuous it is always continuous i mean uh, we are talking about f dash exist which is zero okay see what i'm saying let's suppose the function is increasing then it become flat okay which means uh, i mean f dash is a zero now currently i am talking about uh, i am like this is a picture just assume this is a picture where i am zooming it billion times okay which means the function was something like this but maine is portion ko is portion ko itna zyada zoom kar diya it seems something like this okay which means i am zooming too much too much i am zooming okay just just imagine that i am zooming too much which means ye ek point tha this was just a point this was just a point f a a ek point tha maine isko itna bada dikha diya just to make you understand so basically what was what was happening function was increasing at a it become zero and then from here it has two choices again what are those two choices it may started increasing or it it may go decreasing right so these are the two choices is this okay to everyone if the function take this choice then we say then we say sorry uh, just a second if the function take this choice this choice if the function take this choice then we say that a is local maxima is this okay to everyone right which means it was increasing at a it become zero f dash a is become zero then it started decreasing which means f dash a was uh, positive zero and negative this is one possibility at this point but at this point it if it is taking the second choice if it is taking this choice then what does this mean it was increasing something happened it became zero then it was then it started increasing again then is this the minimum or maximum here if it is taking the second choice no right this is called point of inflation so i will talk about this point later okay so currently i'm i'm not uh, talking about this but i will talk about this later just a uh, uh, just a uh, i mean i can say uh, a spoiler alert okay so basically if you are taking this particular point then you uh, i mean if the function is taking that particular trajectory then you will say that this a is point of inflation right so basically see if you are at this point if you are at this point then the function is having two choices okay i am just zooming it billion times you can you can just think in that terms so function was let's suppose increasing then suddenly the f, it became flat and now you if you are having two choices which means from here if you if you are taking if you either you either the function may start at decreasing or may it it become uh, increasing again so if it started decreasing then you will say it is then you will say it is local maxima if it it will take the same choice then you will say it is point of inflection okay so we will talk about this point of inflection later but yeah this is a point where the f dash s is zero but before that what is the sign the function is increasing which means what is the sign before that the sign was positive so you will say that this is a where f dash a is zero and then before that sign sign of this these are the signs of signs of f dash x right before that it is positive after that it is positive which means this will look something like this it is positive function become uh, flat that's why the uh, the that's why the f a okay that's why the f a zero uh, f dash is zero then again it started increasing right is this okay to everyone so it was increasing it again started increasing in between something happened and i'm saying it is f dash is zero so this is also one possibility okay is this possibility clear this possibility is called point of inflection what if i say if i say the the point is something like this it was increasing and f dash is zero but if you are taking this choice and then it is started decreasing right if you are taking this choice then this is called 
मैक्सिमम लोकल मैक्सिमम ओके सो अगेन आई आई जूम इट टू मच दैट दैट आई मीन जस्ट टू जस्ट टू शो यू दैट इट इज इट इज द पॉसिबिलिटी अदरवाइज दिस इज जस्ट अ पॉइंट ये इतना बड़ा कुछ इंटरवल नहीं है दिस इज जस्ट अ पॉइंट दिस इज ए ओके वी विल टॉक अबाउट पॉइंट ऑफ इन्फ्लेक्शन लेटर लेटर बट या लेट जस्ट समराइज दिस so if it is if it is negative to positive which means it was decreasing then increasing then this is local minima positive to negative which means it was increasing then decreasing local maxima positive to po positive which means it was increasing then something happened okay here the f dash is actually zero something happened and then it started increasing again okay then it is called uh, point of inflection so negative negative means it was decreasing something happened f dash is, is zero and then it started decreasing then uh, then it is basically uh, called Uh, I mean, uh, it is it is basically neither minimum nor maximum. Okay, cool. Have you understood this uh, intuitively? That what is this uh, point of inflection? Basically, it was increasing only. Then something happened. Then increasing only, or it was decreasing. Something happened and then decreasing. Right. So basically, I mean, the function behavior is not changing. Increasing to increasing, but in between something happened and it it become zero. The f dash has uh, f dash a become zero. Then it is called point of inflection. i will talk about the point of inflection in more detail where okay uh, let's just keep it uh, for the future slide let's not worry about here so let's just solve this particular question now you know that how to check the local minima and local maxima using the first derivative test how to check it you make the so the steps are something like this let's suppose right then check check something like this okay cool now let's just do this question so by the way do you remember i was asking point of inflection definition in the group that can you can anyone tell me uh, intuitively i mean uh, you or you people have talked correctly but i just wanted to listen maybe something like this that function is increasing and somehow something happened it it became flat and then it started increasing again so something like this see something like this it was increasing so f dash a f dash a become zero which means the function became flat it started increasing again so if it if it is taking from increasing then if it is taking the choice where it is again increasing then it means that it is point of inflection okay I mean, beach me, kuch hua tha. Because of that, it become the it become flat, but it is increasing only. Cool. Now, okay. Now let's just see this question. Determine the absolute minimum and maximum uh, on this interval. So, how to solve this question? So basically, you need to do or uh, you need to follow the steps. F dash x equal to zero. Okay, you need to follow the steps. F dash x equal to zero, and then uh, maybe I can do it. What are the roots I'm getting? One and minus four, by three. Okay, so if you do f dash x equal to zero, then you will be getting x equal to one and minus four by three. Okay, minus four by three is not in this interval, so let's just reject it. Not in asked interval. Okay. Not an ask interval, so let's just reject it. So x equal to one only. So what you need to do x equal to one. Just check the signs of the function f dash x. So f dash x is six x square plus two x. Six x square plus two x minus eight, right? So now a uh, before one maybe if you put zero then it is minus. After one obviously it will be plus because this is six x square. Let's just put fifty. So after one it is plus. Because there is just one critical point, right? Okay, yeah, that's correct. So there is just one critical point. Ah, uh, that's why you can do it. Okay. So it means function was decreasing and then increasing. So one is minima. So you can say one is minima. The absolute minimum is at f equal to f a ah uh, f at one, which is minus three. Okay. I hope you can do it. Now you can do this question as an homework. I have the solutions on the next page. Okay, this is again asking local minimum, maximum, these kind of things. I have the solution, so you can just do as a number. Okay, 
uh, you can do this this question also as a number right this is easy find the minima so you can find the minima find the maxima you can do it right again find the local okay we will do this later integration we will do this later local minima and maxima so you can do something like this they have used a double derivative but uh, we will see the double derivative also so which is the second derivative test maybe let's just do this question so they have asked this particular question that fx equal to 1 minus mod x then uh then at uh, then the value of fx of at which the function attains the maximum and the uh, minimum values are attains the maximum and the maximum value of the function okay so at which point the function is attaining the maximum let's just do this okay we will talk about the point of inflection later uh, like i have the slide of the point of inflection at that point time at that point of time you can ask this question okay so how to solve this question can you differentiate this i mean it is not differentiable i think at zero only okay not at zero sorry whatever is this number yeah this particular function how to solve this between minus 1 to 1 they are asking the maximum value so the maximum value will be when then this mod x will be minimum right so when is this mod x is minimum in between this i think at x equal to 0 yeah so i think you can directly solve it so at x equal to 0 it should be minimum and then i think c is the correct answer right option c is correct is this okay to everyone see this maximum will attain in this particular range whenever this mod x is minimum and mod x is minimum at x equal to 0 only right so mod x is actually minimum at x equal to 0 y is correct at x equal to 0 the function value is 1 right okay Let's solve this question. This is little interesting question. So what they're asking, which of the following statement is true for the given graph of three functions. So they are saying these three functions are given. Now you need to check whether H is a derivative of F. I think I have the same question. Yeah. So I have just copied the same question on the next slide. So what they're saying that you need to check whether H is a derivative of F or something like that. So you need to check one of this condition. Okay, see the function is decreasing. This f is decreasing. I think I can say g is a derivative of f. I mean, intuitively it seems like right. Since it is decreasing and g is always negative, and the function is always decreasing. Can I say that g is a derivative of f? G equal to f dash. And this is always increasing. And H is always positive. Yeah, it seems like it's the correct uh, thing. H is a derivative of G. Right? Let's just check the options. Is H is a derivative of F? See, it is decreasing. It should be negative. So that's why A is incorrect, right? See, F is decreasing and H is positive. So it should not happen. So H is not a derivative of F. That is for sure. Because if it is decreasing, then the derivative is negative so so that's why that's why a is not correct g is a derivative of f and f is a derivative of h so g is a derivative of f which means if it is decreasing g is negative that's okay and f is derivative of h f is a derivative of h so it is decreasing f should be negative if it is a derivative but f is positive that's why this is also not correct have you understood why a and b are not correct See, f, f cannot be a derivative of h because f is decreasing 
sorry uh, h is decreasing if h is decreasing if it is if f is a derivative then it should be negative right since since in this case it's, it is very much clear that this f is not negative it is positive so that's why this is not the correct option g is a derivative of h okay and h is a derivative of f h is also not derivative of f these two can't be derivative because both are decreasing and if, if one is derivative of another then another one should be negative so that's why you can say uh, that okay c is also incorrect okay so basically d is the correct answer are you able to understand this okay cool right now let's just see the double derivative okay uh, and then we can take a break after that so uh let's just see this function is this function increasing this is very much increasing function right okay you see this function is this function increasing see that function let me just call it function one function one is increasing that is for sure function two what about the function two function two is also increasing right what about the function three let's suppose this is function three this is also increasing okay so these three functions are increasing like we have seen three functions these three functions are increasing now let's just ask a question which is this that you have just seen the three graphs which are h follow h just a second you have just seen these three graph and now uh, you said that all of them are engaging functions so what is the difference between these three this is increasing this is increasing this is increasing now let's just see the difference between these three although all, all, like i mean uh, all of this seems to be increasing but there is a difference let's just see the difference see these are the three graphs if you just look at this first graph then if i check in terms of uh, del x upon del y so this is the i'm keeping this x m this is del x and this is del y okay so if you check the ratio of del y upon del x keeping the same so this is I mean, this del y is little less here. This is more, more, more. So, which means the slope is increasing, right? Here in this example, can you say the in the first example the slope is increasing? So here, this is the del x. This is the del y. Okay. So del y is actually increasing. I'm keeping the del x m. I'm keeping this del x, so whatever the interval, okay. So let's suppose this interval is one. One. I'm keeping this del x m. Now keeping the del x m, the del y is actually increasing, which means if you go from here to here, this value, the difference between this value is actually higher than compared to this value. So here you can say that slope is also increasing, right? Here, if you keep this, uh, if you keep this del x m, then can you say that slope is constant? Which means whatever the del y here, the so same del y, same del y, same del y, isn't it? So here you will say the slope is constant. Here you are saying if you are keeping the del x same, if you are keeping the del x same, here this is the del y, 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 this is the del y. So what you will say? The slope is decreasing. Although all of these functions are increasing, but in first case, the slope is also increasing, which means it is like rapid fire. I mean, the bomb blast, okay, this will blast someday. Like it is increasing too much. Like it is increasing, that is okay, but slope is also increasing. This is a constant function. This is increasing and slope is constant. It is increasing at the same rate. It is also increasing. I'm not saying it is decreasing. It is also increasing, but slope is decreasing. So basically, basically it might so happen that function is increasing also, but the slope may be decreasing. Okay. Can you please draw the tangent for the third one? Yeah. So the tangent is actually the, like at the extreme point, it will be almost zero. Uh, like, I mean, the slope will be almost zero and here the slope is quite good, but here the slope is zero. So basically if it is, let's suppose whatever angle this is now the slope is zero, right? 
here the slope was zero but here it is very much high the slope is quite high okay so have you understood these three examples what i'm trying to convey is that that it might so happen that the function is increasing only but the slope may be constant may be decreasing may be increasing okay so that's where we need to study actually the second derivative so second derivative is actually the change in the first derivative which means change in the slope okay so see the f dash x is positive which means function is increasing or vice versa right now if i want to check whether this f dash x which means slope slope is increasing or not then how can i check See, if I want to check some function is increasing or not, what I do, I just check whether this derivative is greater than zero or not, right? Now tell me if I need to check whether the slope, which is f dash x, right, which is a function of the slope basically, then what will I do? I will just check whether f double dash x is greater than zero or not, right? So basically, if f double dash x is greater than zero, can I say function is increasing? If f double dash x is greater than zero, can I say function is increasing? No, I can't say function is increasing. Okay. Function could be decreasing or increasing. I don't know actually. Basically, if f double dash x is greater than zero, then I will say that f dash x is increasing. See, here, although all of these functions are increasing, but here, if I just say that f double dash x is less than zero, okay. f double dash x is less than zero. Then what does this mean? Slope is decreasing. Right? So this is a this is an example of log x. Which means log x, I think, looks something like this, right? So basically, initially it, it has a good slope, but eventually it is um it is uh, almost zero. So if you I think differentiate it two times what it will be minus one upon x square right so minus one upon x square is less than zero right in this range in this range it is less than zero greater than zero if x is greater than zero then this is actually less than zero so since it is less than zero then what does this mean slope is decreasing can you say anything about the function is function decreasing is this a decreasing function is log x a decreasing function no right it is definitely not a not a decreasing function function is still increasing Function is still increasing, right? So using the second derivative, you cannot tell about the function directly. You can talk about the slope, whether the slope is increasing or decreasing. Now, if I say, if I say that f double dash x is uh, greater than zero, then what does this mean? Slope is which means, I mean, f dash x is actually increasing, which means slope, right? f dash x is increasing. Can I say anything about the sign of this f dash x? Whether the f dash x is greater than 0, less than 0, something like that? See, I cannot even say the sign, which means, for example, uh, Yeah. For example, let's suppose that f double dash x is x square. f double dash x, uh, f dash x is x cube. Okay. Suppose something like this. It is x cube. It is three x square. Now tell me at x equal to minus one, f double dash x is greater than zero, which means what? At x equal to minus one, the slope is increasing, but f dash x f dash x is also less than zero. No right. Basically, if f dash x is less than zero, then the function must be decreasing. But using this f double dash x, I cannot talk about the function is increasing or decreasing. 
which means using the sign of f, f double dash x, I cannot say anything the sign of or sign of f dash x. Only I can comment using the sign of f double dash x. We can only comment about we can only comment about f dash x is increasing or decreasing. See, let me make it very clear. Using f dash x is greater than 0 or less than 0, what do you comment? fx is increasing. You, you talk about the fx, right? No, no. Slope is increasing or decreasing. You cannot say. F dash x is greater than 0. Doesn't, it only tells the value of the slope, right? whether it is positive or negative. In future, whether it is increasing or decreasing, you don't know. So you can talk about the function. Function is f, fx is increasing. Right? Similarly here, that's the only thing you can comment about, right? fx is decreasing. Now, let's just put one more dash. So, if you have f double dash x, which is greater than 0, you can only say whether f dash x is increasing or not, which means slope is increasing or not. Can you say anything about the function? Can you say anything about the function? Can you say anything about the sign of f, uh, f dash x? See, you can only say that f dash x is increasing or decreasing. We cannot say anything about the sign of f dash x. Sign of f dash x means what does this mean? Function is increasing or decreasing, right? So we cannot say anything about the function. Okay. So basically using the sign of, F, uh, uh, so, okay, let me just summarize this. Using the sign of f dash x, you can say function fx is increasing or decreasing. Using the sign of f double dash x, you can say f dash x is increasing or decreasing. That's all. Right now, can you say using the sign of f double dash x? Can you say fx anything about the fx? No, is this okay to everyone? So, for example, let me take the example. Let's suppose that fx is x power 4. Okay, now, now tell me f dash x. 4 x cube f double s x 12 x cube 12 uh, x square right okay just for the example okay uh, i can take this example also but I don't know the graph of x power 4. So that's why. Let's take the example of x square simply. Is this okay to everyone? Now tell me at x equal to, now you only know this, okay? Suppose you only know this. Now, at x equal to minus 2, what is the sign of f double dash x? Can anyone tell me? f double dash x is greater than 0, isn't it? Okay. At x equal to plus 2, f double dash x is again greater than 0. At x equal to minus 2 also, at x equal to plus 2 also, it is greater than 0. Can you say anything about a uh, function increasing or decreasing? See at, if you talk about x square, 
if you talk about x square then this is how it looks like let's not worry about this axis this is how x square looks like now tell me at this isn't it decreasing before zero before zero it is decreasing after zero it is increasing isn't it right it is decreasing here it is increasing here but f double dash x is always positive right so does this say anything about the function is decreasing or increasing which means if i just tell you f double dash x is greater than 0 can you say anything about the increasing function is increasing or decreasing function okay you can't say anything about the function what what can you say you can say things about f dash x whether f dash x is increasing or not so so here in x in uh, in uh, x square here if you notice that see the slope is always uh, this is greater than 0 which means slope is always increasing so let's just check um this is 2 just a second okay so slope should always be increasing right yes yes right so see here the slope is here the slope is basically i mean uh, if you if you check the slope it will be some uh, negative number basically the tan theta it will be some negative number so you can check the slope slope means f dash x so if you check this f dash x here f dash x is actually uh, 2x right so here f dash x is negative and then then i mean if you if you check at any point it is actually increasing so if you take take at minus 3 minus 3 it is minus 6 right f dash x is minus 6 then you talk about uh, minus 2 it is minus 4 so it is increasing from minus 6 to minus 4 i mean the moment you are uh, you are increasing the x it is increasing from minus 4 to 0 then it is increasing to let's suppose x equal to it is 4 something like that so slope is always increasing right initially it is negative then 0 then it is positive so basically slope is always uh, always increasing So, if you talk about whether f dash x is greater than zero, then it doesn't say anything about the function. What does it say? It only says things about slope, whether the slope is increasing or not. So, basically, basically, just see this: that if you say f dash x is greater than zero, then it it talk about the function, right? If you say f dash f double x is greater than zero, then it talks about f dash x, which means slope. Is this clear to everyone? Okay. So, basically. basically this f double dash x greater than 0 means means function is something like this up it is called concave up or convex so concave up basically the function is up so uh, if i say that f double dash x is greater than 0 then at that particular point the function will function will be something like this okay it will be concave up concave up means that it could be it could be i say it could be just this area which means which means that i will say that this this particular this particular behavior is called concave up which means it the function could be just this area function could be could be i mean the point could be in this area so i will tell you what what does this mean so basically if i am saying that f, f double dash x is greater, is greater than 0 then then let's suppose at cert, certain point i am saying f double dash x is greater than 0 maybe i have the examples i think so anyway but uh, first let me just uh, make sure that what i am saying here so if i am saying f double dash x is greater than 0 then the function behavior will be something like this maybe the function could be decreasing if the function is decreasing then then and f double dash x is greater than 0 then function will be something like this okay so basically this is the part where the function is decreasing and f double dash x is greater than 
So function will look, look something like this at that particular point. If function is increasing, and f double sx is greater than zero. So basically, if f double sx is greater than zero, then function will be uh, will be this up, okay, concave up. And and you can just remember this. So for now, just remember this. It will be very handy little little later. If f double sx is less than zero, then it means that function is concave down. So if the function at that particular point is decreasing. Is decreasing, sorry, increasing. Let's suppose, and and f double f double dash x is greater than zero, then function will look something like this. So function is increasing, and f double dash x is less than zero. Okay, and if I say that function is decreasing. So you will see something like this. If the function is decre decreasing and f double dash x is less than zero. So basically, if f double dash x is less than zero, function could be increasing, function could be decreasing. Is this clear to everyone? First of all, that f double dash x does not tell anything about the function increasing or decreasing. Okay. See, this is a plot of minus x square, right? Something like that. I mean, uh, if you take the minus, then it will be the, uh, like it will be upside down. Okay. If you, if you take the minus of x square, it will be something like this. So basically, if you take the double derivative of this, it is minus two only. It is always negative. Does this mean function is decreasing or something? No, function is increasing from this area to this area. Function is decreasing from this area to this, this area. So first of all, it should be clear that f double dash x sign does not tell anything about the function, whether it is increasing or decreasing. What does it say? The slope is increasing, right? Or if it is less than zero, then slope is always decreasing. So here the slope is positive. It becomes zero. Then the slope is negative, right? So slope, slope positive, slope zero, slope negative. So basically if I'm saying the double derivative is always zero. Okay. I mean, uh, let's suppose for the, for the entire value of X, the double derivative is zero. Then what does this mean? Then that, uh, that function, uh, the slope was positive. I mean, the slope is actually decreasing. It only talks about the slope. Does this talk about the function? No function could be decreasing or increasing. So here, here are few cases. I mean, I, I have made the four cases. These four cases are something like this, that if, if we yeah, have double is greater than zero and function is decreasing, then it will look something like this. If f double dash x is greater than zero function is increasing, then it will look something like this, right? If f double dash x is less than zero function is increasing, will look something like this. f double dash x is, is um, uh, great, less than zero function is decreasing. It will look something like this. Are these four cases clear to everyone? Geometrically, is this making any sense? Okay. Let me know. So see for the gate, you might not be needing that much geometrical interpretation, but I hope that is very much straightforward. Like, I mean, see for this particular, the entire function for this, if you say F double dash X is greater than zero, then it is actually concave up. Okay. Now it could be anywhere, uh, like, I mean, concave up means it could be this uh, in this area, the point could be in this area, but point could be in this area, but the point will be basically somewhere, uh, somewhere here. Okay. I mean, the function behavior will be something like this. If F double dash X is less than zero, then it is concave down. Now it will matter whether the function is increasing or decreasing at that particular point in time. If it is in, uh, decreasing. And f double dash x is greater than zero, then then you are talking about this area. If it is if it is increasing and f double dash x is greater than zero, then you are talking about this area. If it is if f double dash x is less than zero and the function is increasing, you are talking about this area. If f double dash x is less than zero, function is decreasing, you are talking about this area. So these are the four cases, right? Now let's just see a few examples. Maybe it will be more clear. So let's just see this question. We are saying there exists a function. Jahan pe f double dash x is greater than zero, which means, which means it is concave up and f dash x is less than zero, which means the function is, what does this mean? The function is decreasing. 
So which area you're talking about? So they are saying, can this exist? Can this exist that f double s is greater than zero, and f double s is less than zero? Which means function is decreasing, and concave up. It means the concave up. It means function is decreasing. It means they are talking about function is decreasing. It's concave up. Function is decreasing. So this area. So now they are saying there exists a function which is always positive, hai, and for all x, for all x it happens. Is this possible that for all x it happens? So here in the, this is not the perfect example because यहाँ पे तो after some point in time the things is uh, I mean the things is uh, things are not good. So basically, can you have a function which always always looks something like this? Maybe कोई function होगा जिसका तो मतलब plot ऐसा होगा. Do you know any function something like this? Um, okay, this is always positive also. Okay, function is also always positive. कोई तो function ऐसा होगा ना जो ऐसे decrease कर रहा होगा. Right. Okay, I think this is e power minus x. E power x is something like this. No, this is log x. You said e power minus. Can you tell me the e power minus x plot? Okay, so e power minus x is always positive because it is e power. If you take the derivative of this. Then um, it is less than zero minus e power minus x double derivative. It is always positive because this is same as f x. Yeah, one upon x also. Yeah, one upon x also. So they are they are asking, is this possible? See, they have they have trimmed down the possibility of of this fun this this thing. They are saying that the function is always remain this the curvature always remain. Uh, I mean, this kind of curvature is al always there. Okay. Which means function always are decreasing. Yeah, for all the points points in x, it's always decreasing. Function is always decreasing, and the curvature is looking something like this. Which means the slope is also uh, slope is increasing. Okay, function is decreasing, slope is increasing, and function is uh, in the first half. मतलब वो इधर मतलब like function is not uh, negative. Okay, it's in this quadrant only. I mean uh, uh, above above x. No, f x is not uh, slope. F dash x is slope. F dash x is less than zero means slope is slope is negative. Always negative. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, slope is uh, slope is negative means function is decreasing. Okay, so let's not worry about the slope and all. So f dash x is less than zero means function is decreasing. Okay, so uh, I hope you understood that how we are formulating uh, such example. So see the the idea here was that if f double x is greater than zero, so first I made something like this. I said f double x is greater than zero, which means it is concave up. Definitely, some somewhere here in the concave up function behavior will be somewhere here. Then, if the function is increasing, then so decreasing, then you are here. Function is increasing, then you are here. Then they are saying it is always decreasing. Function is always decreasing. That's what they have given for all x for all x. It is always decreasing. If function is always decreasing, they have trimmed down this possibility. Okay, increasing is not even the case. So they are saying the function always looks like the first half. Always, and then function is positive. So maybe you can have some some something like this, right? Okay. Let's see more examples. So here, the answer is yeah, something like e power x. This is the plot of e power minus x. Yeah. So this is the plot of e power minus x. Okay. Cool. Let's see this. Now they are saying the graph of f f dash x. So they are they have given the graph of f dash x. The derivative of f x is shown below. Circle all the characters on which of the following interval the f x is concave down. Which means f double dash x is less than zero. So which of the following interval f double dash x is less than zero? That's what they are asking. This is f dash x.
F double S is greater than zero means F dash X is uh, sorry, less than zero means F dash X is decreasing, right? So in which interval F dash X is decreasing? I think from this to this, right? Four to eight should be the answer. Yeah, four to eight. Okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So these are the options. So you can just mark the correct options, right? Let me see the answer. So these are the answers. Four to six and six to eight. Okay. Cool. Let's just see this question. What they're saying. Consider the graph uh, of this. Find the intervals of uh, intervals of increase or decrease. Okay, you can do it as in homework. I have the solution on the next page. For this, you can do as in homework. Find all the maximum and um, minimum of fx you can do. Find the interval f is concave upwards or concave downwards. So how to do this? Can anyone tell me the approach for this third one? I need to check. I need to check intervals where f double dash x is greater than zero. Okay, for concave upwards, for downwards, I need to check f double dash x is less than zero. So you can do as in homework. I have solution on the next page. Okay. Okay, so f double s x is actually zero. It means that uh, at that particular point uh, you can't say anything. I mean, it is changing the behavior. Okay, from concave up to down. Yeah, it's neither at that particular point. It's it's. I I will talk about that particular point a uh, little later. So let's just talk about uh, the second derivative test, and then we will talk about one of the famous thing, which is the point of inflation. So maybe should we stop here? I think it's a good time to stop. It's been two hours. So maybe we can continue tomorrow. Tomorrow, let's just do one thing. We will be starting with the second derivative test. And then we will do uh, these things like uh, point of inflation, which is very good uh, point to discuss. And then we can talk about, uh, uh, yeah, I would know tomorrow. Let's just have uh, Deepak's class. And then I will, I will take class a little later. Okay. A day after tomorrow. So, and then we will talk about uh, the three theorems that we have. Rolls theorem, Langragian theorem, and uh, the, um, the intermediate value theorem. Okay, so maybe I just need one more class probably to finish all of this. Cool. So are you getting uh, the things in the calculus now? Is this more handy? Actually, see all of this we are discussing just interpretation and all. But if you just solve the gate P by Q, it will be easy. Like uh, the gate P by Q are very much straightforward in the calculus. Okay, so we have just discussed uh, some interpretation. Just uh, uh, the second de derivative interpretation might be a little good today. So he, there are the four cases only. The f double s is greater than zero means it will be either this half or this half. You need to talk about which half based on the function is increasing or decreasing, something like that. So these these four cases are very much useful. Just understand those four cases. Okay, so uh, we will be continuing in the next class. Okay, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone. Take care. Bye bye. Okay. This week, uh, let's just first finish this calculus, then we can have a quiz. Okay. After finishing in the live class, we will be having the quiz. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye.